Okay, so we've heard about gravitational force now, and that gravity is the natural phenomenon. Okay, gravity is a natural phenomenon whereby objects attract each other. Attraction is dependent on their mass, their individual masses, as well as the radius between their centers. How does the mass and the radius actually influence the force way with objects attract each other? So Newton did this experiment and he's, he looked at the force, he measured force. And he saw that if I have a mass okay, versus a mass, okay, two masses, then he noticed that they were, there existed a force attracting these two objects to one another. Then you notice that if one of the objects doubled in mass and the other object stayed the same, the force actually also doubled. Okay, which means that the force was directly proportional to the mass of the one multiplied by the mass of the other. Okay, so that if the one doubled, we have to double both sides. Okay, if both doubled in mass, what would happen to the force? Well, if this one doubled, force would double. If this one doubles, the force would double again. So, the force would quadruple. So, this would be equivalent to a force four times as much. Now what he also noticed what was that it depended how far these objects were apart. Okay, so if I have two objects, okay, and from the one center to the other one center, that that's the radius. He noticed that when the objects were further apart, the force between them were less. But not just that, if the objects were twice as far apart, okay, as you can see in this sketch, the distance between the centers are now double that distance. Okay. So if we had this force associated with these two masses and that radius between those two masses, and the radius between the same two masses doubles, he noticed that the force was four times less. In other words, a quarter of what it used to be. If it tripled, and let's imagine that is the radius that tripled, okay, so now the radius is three times as much, now, he saw it was one ninth, and from that he could conclude that the force was indirectly proportional to the radius squared. So it was proportional to one over the radius squared. Okay, now putting these things together, we can conclude the following, that the force between two objects are proportional to the mass of the one multiplied by the mass of the other one divided by their radius squared. Now this expressed in, in an equation would give us that the force is equal to some constant, let's call it capital G, multiplied by mass of one, mass of the other divided by the radius squared. In other words, that there exists some constant number that we can multiply this expression with to calculate the size of the force. Okay, now let's have a look. Force is in Newton. In other words, this is kilogram times meter times second to the power of negative two. That's the unit for force, the SI units for force. <coughs> Mass on this side, we get kilogram times kilogram divided by radius 
squared, which is measured in meters, meters squared. So we want to take these units and transform them into kilogram meters per second to the power of negative two. Now one thing that we notice here is that we have two kilograms. That means the unit for G is going to have to have one kilogram divided dividing away. Okay. Now also what we notice is here we have meters to the power of one while in this one we have meters to the power of negative two. To get from negative two to positive one we are going to have to have meters to the power of three. Now you can notice if this cancels with two of these I will have one left. I also notice that I am going to need two seconds or seconds to the power of two in the denominator divide because the exponent is negative two so I'll have to have s to the power of negative two here now if I cancel that kilogram with that kilogram m with those two m's with two of those m's to be left with one I'll be I'll have kilogram meters per second squared left that means the unit for G is equal to meters cubed times kilogram negative one times seconds negative two. I hope you got that. If you didn't, go back a little bit and just make sure. But this is only the unit for G. We don't know the magnitude of G. In other words, it is a constant number. What is that number? Now, using experiments, the value of that constant was determined as g is equal to 6,67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. With the units, let's start with the kilogram meter cubed per second squared. Okay, now I just want to show you another way of expressing the units. The unit can also be expressed in terms of newtons. Okay, so kilograms, sorry, instead of kilograms, we can put newtons. Okay, now remember, newtons is kilograms, meters per second squared. Now you can see we already have that part, so we've used that one in the newtons. Okay, we've used one of the meters, so there's still two meters left. And now we used another kilogram, but we were already owing one kilogram. So now we're owing two kilograms. If I, if, if you can see it like that, okay. So this would be meters squared left, and now kilogram to the power of negative 2 because we didn't have a positive 1 to use we had to borrow 1 so now we already have we're already borrowing 2 okay so this is another way of expressing the units for this g and this g is called the gravitational constant so to summarize if we wanted to calculate the force that existed between two objects we would take this gravitational constant of 6.67 times 10 to the power negative 11 and multiply it with the product of the two objects masses divided by the radius between their centers squared and that would give us the force that exists between those two objects this is going to be the formula that you can use to calculate the force that exists between those two objects.